Really? The room? You want me to talk about the room? I mean, is there anything that can be said that hasn't already been said by louder and more popular internet personalities than I? I'm pretty sure every single second of this film has been analyzed, scrutinized, and made fun of in the past eight years since its release. It's more or less taken the mantle of the modern Plan 9 from Outer Space, a film celebrated for its incompetence more than most good films are celebrated for their, you know, quality. The main difference between the two films is that Plan 9 was filmed by an interesting director, whereas the room director, Tommy Wiseau, has about as much personality as Plank from Ed, Ed, and Eddie. I mean, really, the Nostalgia Critic has done it, Obscurus Lupa has done it, Rift Tracks did a riff of it, Patton Oswalt par parodied uh, Tommy Wiseau, Adult Swim aired it on April Fool's, The Cinema Snob parodied it. I think... I think it was mentioned in an episode of Veronica Mars? So yeah, it's pretty well-trodden territory. I guess I should summarize the film for those of you who haven't seen it and haven't seen the other reviews of it on the internet. But as I sit here in front of my word processor, trying to gather my thoughts, I now realize just how little happens in this film. Tommy Wiseau plays Johnny, a banker living in San Francisco with his fiancée Lisa, who cheats on Johnny with his best friend Mark. Johnny finds out about it and kills himself. I mean, that's it, really. And yet the film somehow makes a, the 100-minute mark. Oh, sure, there's subplots galore, but I'm not really sure if you can count them, considering not a single one of them ever gets resolved, nor do any of them have anything to do with the main plot. Uh, the two big ones people tend to bring up is Lisa's mother getting diagnosed with breast cancer and a character named Denny owing a drug dealer money. In any other movie, these would be huge plot points, but in the room, they each get one scene and are completely forgotten about as soon as they're over. There's a lot of minor characters who are introduced and just disappear, and then we get long stretches of time dedicated to scenes where characters get coffee, order flowers, and throw footballs in the park, and the sex scenes. Again, none of which has anything to do with the main story. Except the sex scenes. I have a theory as to the room's script. Um, okay, so uh, Tommy Wiseau immigrates to America from Fraschistan and uh, winds up in San Fran. He rents a room from a little old lady who has a giant collection of soap operas recorded off a of television on VHS. All my children, as the world turns, day of our lives, piles and piles of episodes since the invention of the VCR. Whenever Tommy wasn't doing janitorial work at J.C. Penney's, he was sitting in front of an old black-and-white television and learning American culture through the works of Procter & Gamble. Because, really, that's what the room is. A soap opera clip show. All the main storylines are there. Uh, the problems of successful people. Cheating, weddings, pregnancies, drug, cancer, job promotions, domestic violence, alcohol, and calling people chicken. But the last one only counts if you consider Arrested Development a soap opera. Throw in a bunch of bad community theater actors and put them in front of a green screen and voila, you have the room. Okay, look, here's the thing about the room. I don't give a shit about it. It's a bad movie, yes, but it's also some amateur's pet project. The Room should have as much cinematic importance as that shitty zombie movie you made with your Panasonic in high school. And yet it's gradually become a part of pop culture over the last eight years, which I think is totally undeserved. It's an amusing film to watch and make fun of in your private Mystery Science Theater 3000 wannabe group, but it's got no business being a successful cult phenomenon that it still makes money. In a world where serious artists don't get the light of day, Tommy Wiseau should not be a household name. Wiseau, why, what, what? Tommy Wiseau, never mind. Uh, why have people decided to pick the movie equivalent of a bum off the street as something worth talking about? This isn't like an awful Michael Bay film that is funded by major studios and horrible product placement and forced down our throats via advertisement. This isn't like an awful Uwe Boll film where the director threatens violence to anyone who criticizes his film. 
The Room is a cheap o nothing of a film made by made by some foreign non-actor, non-director, non-personality. Again, it's a fun little f- film to poke at, but it's not the Jesus Christ of bad movies, people. Which brings me to the fan interaction events surrounding this film. I hate most fan interaction events. Uh, be it for The Room, the Rocky Horror Picture Show, the Sing Along Sound of Music, or what have you. It feels so rehearsed. Everyone says quotes and throws plastic utensils on cue. At that point, the film is not entertaining you. You are entertaining the film. And guess what? The film isn't a conscious being that can be entertained. You know, at least the Rocky Horror Picture Show... Uh, People are celebrating a unique movie, and uh, with The Sound of Music, people are celebrating what is widely considered a good movie. When you pay money to celebrate a film that doesn't deserve any serious attention at all, something has gone terribly wrong. And don't get me wrong, I'm not against the whole peanut gallery thing. One of my favorite movie-going experiences was going to see Snakes on a Plane in a packed theater, and it was pretty much a live MST3K with a cast of 150. It was great. Everyone was wisecracking and laughing and having a good time. The main difference between that and these events uh, is that snakes on a plane, that whole thing, that was spontaneous and in the moment. Not a bunch of people waiting patiently to shout, You're tearing me apart, Lisa! Whatever. I am not paying money to attend an event of scripted catcalls. Listen, If you happen to be one of the people who attend these events, I'm not going to stop you, but do me a favor. Go to your local movie rental and find a foreign, independent, or classic film you've never heard of before, rent it, watch it, and post your honest thoughts about it online. I'm not saying you have to like it, but going to see the same movie and performing the same actions once a month is not a healthy part of a film-going diet. If I was to construct a movie food pyramid, a guide to having a healthy film-going diet, I'd put films you know are bad going in at the uh, junk food spot on the top, uh, your typical blockbusters and chick flicks and stuff at, at the uh, milk and meat spot, your critically acclaimed classics and Academy Award winners in the fruits and veggie spots, and your foreign independent and art films in the grain spots. Granted, I'm more of a movie guy than your average American Joe, and not everyone cares for a diverse film palette, but I still stand that watching shitty movies like The Room over and over again is mentally and artistically unhealthy as you can get. And just so people don't get me wrong, I'm not saying don't enjoy bad movies. I'm a fan of Mystery Science Theater 3000. I have a bunch of cinema snob-worthy films in my collection, and they can be a lot of fun to watch. I'm saying, don't elevate a bad movie beyond what it is. A bad movie! And The Room isn't even a great bad movie. It's boring most of the time, and its entertainment value comes from the horrible acting. Neither The Room nor Tommy Wiseau deserve this kind of attention. Stop giving them money! And, uh, one final thing. If you happen to be a video reviewer like the people on That Guy with the Glasses, don't even touch The Room. It's been done to death, and there's no more comedy that can be gleaned from it. The well has run dry. I would even try to avoid jokes about The Room as well, as there's as it's just shorthand for, hey, what about that Room movie? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. By God, people, review something new! Review something different! Expose the world to the lost treasures of the past, the obscure, the rare, things that didn't get the attention they deserved when they were originally created. Be original! Wait, wait, what's this? Birdemic is now replacing The Room as the bad movie to beat? Ah, great. Something new to hate. If you want to find The Room, the DVDs is everywhere.